Welcome back. Hoping to inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. And well, I hope it's working. It's Monday. I hope you survived the weekend. And now you got to get through the whole week. But how do we do that? We read the Bible. Acts chapter 2 this week, 47 verses of... It's going to be a good... We've learned several words here. Dooziness and well, the one we learned last week. Ornamentatious. I'll be dropping another one by midweek, so hang around to hump day. Here we go, 47 verses, Acts chapter 2, New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native language. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking in our own language about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to the cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him, I see the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew what God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us just as you see in here today. For David himself never ascended into heaven Yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, 
Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the praising while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Man, 47 verses of, well, what we call history, the history of the church. But here's my take on it, and I hope it inspires you to think a little bit outside the box of Acts chapter 2. We often get hung up on, well, the whole speaking in tongues thing. We're going to talk about that later this week. Shoot a pecan down and tie my bow tie. Whew, it's going to be a good one. Well, let's look at what's really happening. What's happening is this is the beginning of the birth of what we would call this thing church. I love what Peter said. He said, look, I'm coming to you a crooked and perverse generation. Every generation always thinks that. Every generation thinks, well, we're the crooked and perverse generation. <laughs> Well, even Peter thought the same thing. So what is the answer? Well, it's kind of weird. We can get tricked into thinking, well, with all of our technology smarts and brilliance, and well, we can probably woo people out of their perverse and crooked ways, especially if they come to my church and hear my great music and drink my great coffee. Ooh, that'll woo you right out of perversion. <laughs> get a hold of a good cup of coffee. Woo! You will never serve the devil again. Well, I don't know if that's how it goes, but sometimes I think we are tricked into thinking that all of our, well, brilliant, educated, talented, anointed ways will woo a generation out of their crooked and perverse ways. And yet, when the church started, God knew that the only way to do it is the power of the Holy Spirit. And when a generation of people serve God, and put the Holy Spirit in a back room and refuse to allow his power to be out front because we're afraid that people might get offended. A crooked generation might get their feelings hurt if the Holy Spirit is out front leading the way and we put the Holy Spirit behind our talents and behind our programs and behind our performances over in a back room because <laughs> he's the red-headed stepchild of the Trinity, you know. <laughs> Don't want to bring him out. <laughs> Whew, he's kind of like a bad uncle at a picnic. <laughs> well, when you think that way, how ludicrous and foolish are we to think that our brilliance and our technology and our performances and our programs will ever woo a generation from a perverse and crooked way of life. It's only the Holy Spirit that can do it. And I'm excited to pull that out with you this week. Hey, come back tomorrow. It's going to be a blast.